What if you could build an automation that automatically finds thousands of local customers for your business, pulling their contact information directly from Google Maps, and you could do it all for free. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can build a powerful Google Maps scraper inside N8 and we'll be using Google's own official Places API, which is super reliable and gives you a massive free quota every single month. And this is perfect for generating a huge list of leads. And this means you can finally stop paying for expensive subscriptions like Appify or Apollo and you'll have a lead generation system that you own completely and a system that saves you hundreds of dollars. So let me stop wasting your time and let me walk you through my entire workflow and guide you on building the system for your business. So let's get started. Alright, now that we are in N8, I'll walk you through the entire workflow from start to finish. Then we'll do a quick demo to see the results in action and then we'll dive deep into each of these nodes and we'll try to understand the logic behind them. Alright, so let me start by giving you a high level overview of how this whole system functions. So the execution starts with the manual trigger that you can see here. You can essentially start this with any trigger of your choice. You can start this with a webhook if you want to. For the sake of the demo, I'm just using a manual trigger. Once you double click on that, you can see that I have given a search query here. So currently the search is being done for restaurants in the city of Austin and for the state of Texas and for this particular zip code. So if you want to edit the search query, you can just come over here and click on this edit button and you can edit the parameters to your choice and that's all about it so once you have the search query set in the manual trigger the next node would be the set api key node so this is basically a set node so to add a set node you can click on plus and search for set here and from the list you can see the pencil icon here you can click on that and the set node would be added to your canvas so for this particular example the set node would be adding the api key for the google places api which is the api that ran us access to Google Maps. So we'll have to create an API key for the Google Places API, which I can show you next. But for now, know that once we create the API key, so this set node essentially sets the API key and it also takes the search query from the manual node and passes it on to the code node. So you can think of this entire workflow in two distinct phases. We have the first phase, which happens entirely inside this code node that you see here. In the first phase, we make the initial API call to the Google Places API. The initial API call does a general search based on the search query that we provide through the manual trigger. So in this case, we are searching for restaurants in Austin, Texas, and we are zeroing in on the zip code 73301. And as a result, we'll get a list of all the business listings present on the Google map, along with a unique identifier, which is the place ID for the business. So this place ID is unique for each of these business. And this particular identifier is important as we'll be passing this ID to our second API call which would fetch us all the relevant details that we require in depth for that particular place ID. So the details search happens in phase 2 and the general search happens in phase 1. So once we have that master list of place IDs, the workflow moves into the second phase that is the detailed processing phase. So for every single place ID that the code node outputs, the loop fetches them one by one and we hit the Google's place details service once again and this is where we do the deep dive. This targeted call uses the place ID to fetch more detailed information such as phone numbers, business ratings. You can also access each and every reviews or any metrics that you can get from a Google search. You can basically access them here. And once we have all of those details, we, we wait for a couple of seconds before we write to the Google sheet. And this three second pause is very important because when you're writing data to a spreadsheet too quickly, that too via API requests, it will definitely hit the API rate limits for the Google sheets api and it will stop the workflow immediately and you'll have to rerun it again in order to prevent that from happening we have this wait node so we have each and every entry written to the google sheets without any issues whatsoever all right now that you have a basic understanding of how all the nodes work together let's run this and see the results in action so to run this i'll click on execute workflow and you can see that the code node is being run right now so it will fetch results and it will pass it on to the loop as you can see around 60 items have been passed to the loop 
and you can see that it's currently being updated onto the google sheet and this loop runs until all of these 60 results that the code node outputted is done and once that is done the workflow would stop execution so we can see that around five to six items are already appended to the google sheet let's check out the sheet to see this in action all right now we are in the google sheet and you can see that the workflow is executed behind the scenes and the entries are being updated live we have around uh, 11 results the 12th one is added now we have fetched basic details such as business name phone number uh, physical address website and rating so all of these results are fetched so you can see that all these results are fetched for austin texas this workflow would end once it hits uh, 60 results so if you're wondering why 60 results it's because for a google search api you get only 20 results per page if you are getting one page full of google listings so it will have 20 results so in order to access the next 20 results you'll have to go to the second page so once you are done with that 20 results then you'll have to access the third page so like that we can access the first three pages using the google places api so that would be three times 20 would be 60 results in total for so for a single search operation you can access a maximum of 60 results but if you want to access more than 60 you can easily do so you just have to tweak with the search terms for instance if you're searching for restaurants you can search for chinese restaurants mexican restaurants or you can search for steakhouses you can search for michelin star restaurants or you can make up any term that refers to a restaurant and you can start grabbing more and more search results for every run so this basically runs across the entire zip code and fetches you all sorts of restaurants in that area so that is how this whole system works and next i'm going to show you how you can enable the google places api create an api key and how you can set that api key inside of your n8 and workflow so in order to enable the google places api and set our api keys you'll have to come to the google cloud console and i've showed you how you can access the google cloud console in a couple of my earlier videos you can check that out all you have to do is just search in google for google cloud console google does offer you 300 dollars of free credits as you can see i am on my free trial for this account 300 dollars is more than enough i have scraped close to a thousand or two thousand leads in the past couple of weeks and as you can see i have only used up to eight dollars in credits so you can easily scrape thousands of leads just using the free plan so once you are in gcp you'll have to create your project and it's very straightforward you can just click on here and click on create a new project i have explained this clearly in my n8 and for beginners video which i'll be linking in the description i will also link the timestamps for google cloud console so that you can just go there and refer that while creating your project so for now we'll search here for google places api and you have places api and you also have the places api the newer version of the api let's stick to the older version because it works most of the time so just select places api and once you're here you get the option to enable the api here since i have already enabled it it's showing me the option to manage the api but you will be getting an option to enable it so just click on enable and once you click on enable you will have the manage button click on that so you'll be navigated to this dashboard where you can see different map related apis and make sure you scroll down and you can see the places api here make sure that it is enabled once it's enabled you will have the disable option here so under that you can click on keys and you'll be directed to this page where you can see that i have already created a key here if you want to create a new key you can just click on create credentials and select the option to create an api key so once you click on that you can see that an api key is created so once you have that ready just copy it and we can start using the api key there so one more thing regarding the api key you can also restrict your api key so that it's only restricted to the app that you are trying to use and no other external application or server can access that api so in order to do that you can click on the api key created so once you do that you get the option to add application level restrictions and api level restrictions you can assign certain applications to access this api you can give access to certain ip addresses to access this api so you can prevent misuse of this api and here you can set api level restrictions so this means that you can set which apis this api key can access 
so if you want to uncheck any of these apis you can just uncheck it here and click on ok so i'm just gonna keep it as it is i click on ok so once you're done you can click on save now that we have created the api key and we have set restrictions just copy the api key and let's go back to n8 so once you're back in n8 we'll go back to the set api key node double click to open it so once you're inside that you'll have to create a variable here called api key and you paste your api key here and you have to also make sure that you toggle this include other input fields button on so that the search query that we receive from the manual trigger gets passed on to the next node along with the api key so next let's explore the contents of the code node double click to open it and as you can see here we are using a javascript code to handle the initial search api call and the pagination so by pagination what i mean is handling the first three pages or the first 60 results that are split across the three pages of a google search so as i explained earlier when you ask google for a list of places it only gives you 20 at a time along with a special next page token which you can use to access the next 20 so this code automates the process of going back and forth and asking for the next page and the final output as you can see here on the right side is a list of unique place ids which are google's internal ids for each location so we can see that here if you just click on here and search for place id and if you just scroll down you can see different place ids for each of these listings that's one here's another one and if you scroll down we can see another one and these unique place ids are passed on to the upcoming loop node which then uses it to make a second api call to the google places api to gather more in-depth information so let's quickly go through the code here we are receiving the input search query in as a json input as you can see here and we are storing that input data into this and we separate the search query the city the state and zip code into separate variables and we and as you can see when we start to run the code we set the next page token as null and the initial run as true then we kick off the for loop here which checks if this is an initial run so if it's an initial run which is true in this case it will then hit the google places api as you can see here it would target this specific endpoint slash place slash text search and it would pass on the search query and the api key as query parameters and once that is done it will set the initial run variable to false so for the next iteration this would be the next run and it would also give it a next page token uh, for the second iteration the else section would run and it would again target the same endpoint it would pass on the next page token and the api key as the query parameters and it would second and it would fetch the second and third pages as well so we will have a total of 60 results by the end of execution and this code node would output the unique place ids as we have seen here onto the right so these are the place ids that will be outputted onto the loop node which we'll be checking out next so in the loop node what happens is it will target each of these 60 place ids in batches of one and it would be hitting the place details api which is the second api request for the google places api and if you can see it is a get method and it would be accessing this endpoint and this would be accessing this specific endpoint slash place slash details and we are passing a couple of query parameters here as well so make sure that you check this on and you'll be passing the place id here which we would be receiving from the previous request and and we would be also passing passing the api key here which we will be receiving from the previous response and this time as you can see when we hit the places api for the second time we get a lot of details as in we get when the places are open we get the overviews we get the proper latitude longitude we get photo references and the contributors so we also get access to ratings and reviews by customers as well so here we can see that somebody has given the place a five star rating a month ago and we get their entire review so these are all powerful data that we can use to understand a business or how well it's doing right and we can also see the total number of ratings we can see the website we can see even minute details such as wheelchair accessibility and there are a lot of information you can play around with and whatever data that you can get from a google map listing you can get it through this api and this api would be hit for all of the 60 place ids that we receive from the code node and once that is done we 
wait for three seconds and then we append the fields of our choosing onto our target Google Sheet. And the Google Sheets node has a very simple setup. If you can just open it, you can see that uh, it's connected with my Google Sheets credentials. So I have also explained this in my previous video on N8 and basics. You can check that out. And I have selected the sheet and I have selected the operation as append and I will select the sheet as well. And I have also mapped all of the values that I will be fetching from the API response to the specific column name. And you can see the JSON output on the right side and the three second wait timings. We make sure that we don't hit the API rate limits. And this is all you have to do. So let's try out a different variation of the search term to extract the next 60 place IDs. So let's go and try out that. So I'm back here at the canvas. Let's go back to the search query. Let's modify it. So this is currently searching for restaurants. Uh, let's modify this. I'll click on edit. Now let's search for Indian restaurants in Austin, Texas. So I'll click on save. Then we'll come back to the canvas and I'll click on execute workflow. And we can see the workflow is currently running and we can see that it has fetched around 43 items this time. Let's go back to the Google sheet and see if the new results are coming up. We can see that the new results are all Indian restaurants in Austin, Texas. So we can just verify the address here. Yes, it's in Austin, Texas. And maybe we can just test the accuracy of any one of these rows just to cross verify if all the details are being fetched properly. So let's do a thing. Let's try for this row. This is Saffron in Austin. And let's go to Google Maps and search and see if we are getting the right results. And now I am in Google Maps and I've searched for Saffron in Austin. And as you can see, it's an Indian restaurant. Let's check if all the data is correct. The address is 3616. And yes, here you can see that the address is coming up correctly. It's 3616. And let's check the phone number as well. It ends in 1732. Let's check the Google Maps listing to see if this is right. All right, we can see that the number ends in 1732 and that is correct as well. So you can see how powerful this whole system is. You can pretty much search for any type of business. You can narrow down to a particular location, to a pin code. Maybe if you're searching something in London, you can maybe split it as North, South, East and West London. You can uh, set a zip code range so that it can it can iterate through them as well. You can consider this as a foundation for a more powerful business intelligence unit. The spreadsheet that we created isn't just the final product. It does offer high quality targeted lead lists that every successful campaign is built upon. And this is where it really gets exciting, right? Because this workflow doesn't have to end here. And you can imagine and be creative with expanding the system. Uh, like for every website we just found, you could maybe trigger a second automation that visits the site and maybe scrape key information about the business from their website. From there, you could feed that information to a different agent to perform research about the business. For example, <coughs> you're selling marketing services for a dental clinic. The system could identify which clinics don't have a blog or a strong social media presence. Then it could automatically draft a highly personalized cold email that highlights the specific gap and you can pitch your service as the solution and you can go wild with this right and the simple workflow can be transformed into a from a simple data collector into a fully automated machine that finds prospects researchers their specific needs develops targeted outreach campaigns and that to at scale so the possibilities are truly limitless and it all starts with the core system so if you have any questions about this workflow or have any ideas on how to expand it you can drop them in the comments and if you are a business owner looking for implementing this powerful system in your business to generate leads but you need a hand with the technical setup uh, my email is in the description you can feel free to reach out to me and uh, we can discuss on building a custom solution for you thanks a lot for watching this and i'll see you on the next one